So what I like, one of the things I really appreciate about this particular textbook that we use is that it provides what I think is some relatively easy to grasp sort of context for why the calculations that we end up doing make sense to what we're trying to do in linear algebra. So in this example, we're given these two linear transformations, T and S, and we know they're standard matrices. And we're trying to find a standard matrix for their composition, S of T, right? So T first followed by S. And the way that you did that in this example um, was by directly finding the results of S composed with T applied to each of the three standard basis vectors of R3. And then those, by definition of standard matrix, become the columns of the standard matrix for their composition. And so let me just put up the, the work that this is team. Uh, we've jumbled the teams up, so it doesn't even matter which team this is anymore. But this team did a great job with it. Um, so you found S of T of each one of the standard basis vectors and got those. And then those become the columns of my matrix. And that matrix is then the standard matrix for the product. And so the composition, rather. And so what we say is that this is the product of the standard matrix for T, which we're going to call A, and the standard, or sorry, B, and the standard matrix for S, which we're calling A. So this is supposed to be the same thing as B times A. So just to kind of step back from that for a second and see what exactly happened in that calculation. We're trying to find these three columns, which are the images of these three standard basis vectors from R3. So we're taking the first standard basis vector, applying t to it and getting some vector here, and then applying s to that and getting some vector over here, which is going to become this column of my, uh, of my standard matrix. And so you figured out that that column was 12, 5, 31, negative 12. And so that is the image of the first standard basis vector from R3 um, as a, a vector in R4, the result of applying first t to the standard basis vector and the s to that. Right? And so where did that actually come from? Well, where that came from is it came from the result of applying the s transformation to the result of applying t to the first standard basis vector. But the result of applying t to the first standard basis vector gives me exactly the first column of the t matrix. And so what I've really done here is I've multiplied that matrix by the first column of the second matrix. And when I do that, what am I really doing but taking twice the first column of that matrix, added to 5 times the second column of that matrix. And so if I write that out, twice the first column added to 5 times the second column, twice five times, twice, five times, twice, five times. Um, and then my original columns here were 1 and 2, and 0 and 1, and 3 and 5, and negative 1 and negative 3. And then adding those results together. If we sort of zoom out on what's happening down here, what am, I, what am I doing? I'm kind of going across the rows of my first matrix and taking, if you took linear, or sorry, if you took multivariable calculus with me this summer, you'll recall the idea of a dot product. I'm taking the dot product of the first row of this matrix with the first column of this matrix, and that gives me the first entry in the product of those two matrices. 1 times 2 plus 2 times 5. And then my next entry down is the second row dotted with the first column, 0 times 2 plus 1 times 5. And then the third entry, 3 times 2 plus 5 times 5. And the fourth entry, negative 1 times 2 plus negative 2 times 5. So we're just going across the rows of the first one of the matrices in my product and down the columns and just finding the dot products of those results. And then to do the second column, we would do the same thing, but instead of using the first column of the second factor matrix, we would use the second column. So it's 1, negative 3, multiplied by the matrix in question. And then that would give me the vector in R4, which is the image of the second standard basis vector, and so on and so on. So this is usually when what most linear algebra students take away from their introduction to multiplying matrices is just this sort of algorithm 
right? You sort of go across the row over here, down the column over there, and multiply and add the sums of the products, right? Um, but what I like and really appreciate about this book is it shows us why that arose, why it happens exactly in that way. Uh, is because what we're doing is we're finding the images of the standard basis vectors through both of these transformational steps that are being chained together.